Hello everyone, it's Quick Flash, and today I'm going to be discussing um, kind of what's going to be in version 1.0.0 and um, what's going to make that different from Betaflight. So, as you can see here, this is the Emu Flight GitHub, this is the old Emu Flight code, this is going to be, you know, we're going to merge the 1.0.0 into here, but this code is essentially going to disappear. And our old code base, which was built on Butterflight, which was built on Betaflight 3.5, is going to be no more. So that'll be good news. There's going to be a lot of really good things coming over. And first off, I'd like to really thank you guys for getting us to over half a million total downloads. Um, and, you know, the latest release has, you know, over a hundred thousand downloads which is incredible it's really awesome to see that many people um, that many downloads coming in anyhow um, just to show you real quick kind of some of the work that I've done <coughs> um, if you go to github and you go to insights you can come over to this page you click on contributors and you can see who's added code and then if you select um, within this graph you can pick a section so I picked um, only the time that I've um, changed code. So what I'm doing here with all these code changes is bringing in all of the emu flight code changes into the latest beta flight while I continue to merge the latest beta flight code into emu flight. So it's consistently staying up to date with beta flight while changing and adding new things and removing things and you know so some beta flight features are being removed or changed or altered and others are being you know other emu flight features are being added. And so that's what's happening in this section of time. So you can see it's been on and off. I've been adding things, changing things, because I've still been adding some code to this, you know, older Emu Flight branch. Um, you know, there's still some changes, still some pull requests going on. And with some of these newer changes that have been added, um, like we're currently still testing out the mixer a lot. Um, once our testing and figuring of this out gets finalized, That'll need to be, you know, added into the Emu Flight 1.0.0 code, which, you know, is up to date with Beta Flight. So all the advantages that Beta Flight has, Emu Flight will have by the time the this update is over. But all the Emu Flight code additions will be added. So <clears throat> let's go over what I've added so far as of November 5th. Um, and to do that, I'll come here to the commits, and these are what I've added. So um, if any of you guys have seen UAV Tech's video where he talks about what's new in version 4.3, um, all of that will be in this code, plus anything else the beta flight adds, plus everything I've done here. So to start off, um, I added, I created this code base back in May, um, changed the names of things, um, you know, changed the name so it's not beta flight, it says emu flight. Um, currently the version numbering is version 5. Point zero. Um, the reason for that is just, um, you know, if I named things version 1.0, the both the black box logger and the beta flight configurator wouldn't work. And so for now, I'm keeping the numbering at version 5, so I can tell it's my hex files. Um, if I kept it at version 4, it would work, but then I wouldn't have the distinction between my hex files. And I can't rename my files yet, or it would break you know, working with the beta flight configurator and such. So, aside from that, I um, renamed some of the files, so in all of the files it mentions emu flight. Um, then I added rate dynamics in the matrix filter. Um, <coughs> along with that I added the Kalman filter. Um, I removed crash recovery um, because to be honest, the beta flight code, this code is really tight on memory. It's really close to not having enough memory to even compile. Um, in crash recovery, I bet none of you have ever used it. Um, so to explain what that was, because it's no more, is if you hit something and it detected a crash, it would enable angle mode, you know, self-leveling, and it would just level you out. Well, nobody uses that because it causes more problems than it actually fixes. <clears throat> now, I left a small portion of the crash recovery code that will disarm your quad if you're in GPS mode in 
and you crash. And it detects the crash, then it'll disarm you. Um, so I did that, I added D-Shot 1200, 2400, I removed one shot 42 and one shot 20, 125, I might re-enable those, but, um, yeah, if you're using one shot 125, like, there's, you just need to update your gear, like, come on. <clears throat> and then I added the Silverware Angle Mode code, so all the Angle Mode improvements that I've made into Emu Flight, that has been ported over as well. Um, just some merging stuff going on there. <clears throat> what else has been done? I've updated some of the default settings so that D-min is no longer a default, as well as better PIDs and different filters. Um, I added some better accelerometer recovery codes so that if you crash in angle mode, you know how sometimes you're quads just off at an odd angle for a while and it doesn't want to fix that well this ACC recovery or accelerometer recovery should help out with that and you know should help make things a bit better I added the brushed code fix that I put in emu flight that gives brushed motors more power I've re-enabled 32 kilohertz I added D-Shot 4800 so um, this code is D-Shot 1200, 2400, and 4800. Um, if you want to use RPM filtering, you can only use D-Shot 600. So, um, yeah, um, I added a way to turn off the Kalman filter. If you set um, W to 0, the IMUFW, that will turn off the Kalman filter now. So you can turn that off in this code if you want. Integrated yaw has been removed. Nobody uses that anyways. Um, for a time, I added a dynamic notch on the D-term. I've removed that. Um, I added this dynamic low-pass filter, too. Um, it's really just an improvement and a fancier way of handling the low-pass filter that moves with your throttle. It adds another aspect to it that somewhat models what the Helio IMUF filter does, so that's kind of cool. Um, <coughs> see, I added the dynamic low-pass filter on the D-term and on the gyro. Um, since some of these commits, I've greatly improved it. Um, but yeah, I updated the Kalman a little bit here. Improved the angle code. I added the D-term measurement stuff to so the feathered pids. I've brought over to um, this code so you can choose whether your D-term is from error or measurement, a value of 100 is measurement, value of 0 is D-term from error, and anywhere in between is, you know, different way of doing D-term. Um, brought emu boost over from the code. I updated rate dynamics so that it updates correctly no matter what your receiver rate is. So if you use a receiver that has 100 hertz update, and then a receiver that has 500, it'll act the same. Dynamic rates will function the same. I'm um, added emu boost, added sharpness to the Kalman filter. <coughs> so I have here, I tried to fix some VTX table stuff, but in the end, I realized that the only real way to fix the VTX tables is to do that in the GUI. So that in the GUI, you can just select a default, and that will, um, you know select and automatically configure your VTX. So that's what we're going to do is just in the GUI there will be a VTX tab and you can just select a preset and get your GUI working perfectly. I mean your VTX tables set up perfectly. And that will fix all the annoyance with VTX tables and how they're annoying to set up. It will just be click, 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 you're done. You know, It will take an extra second or two but you'll have all the VTX table stuff for those few of you that like that. Um, I made some updates to the some code I added. I decay to the code, so we have I decay in version 1.0.0 as well. Um, obviously, I haven't finished porting everything over at this point, <coughs> but I added the Emu Flight TPA. Um, that's the P I and D TPA, and the ability to boost that. Um, you know, the ability to boost that is actually somewhat similar to using um, thrust linearization. Um, thrust linear linearization really boosts your PIDs at low throttle or low motor output. 
and decreases it near high motor output, so TPA can kind of act like that a little bit. Um, and here I removed some code. I removed um, Acro Trainer because nobody uses that, as well as um, Absolute Control because nobody uses that either. Um, yeah, I removed Absolute Control and Acro Trainer. Um, I've removed the Air Mode Low Pass Filter, which nobody uses either, and with the new mixer that we have in the works, the Air Mode Low Pass Filter doesn't make sense. It doesn't work there, and we will be updating the mixer code in here, so I've removed the Air Mode Low Pass Filter. So, you know, it's not needed, and we're going to add code that doesn't use it. If you don't know what the Air Mode Low Pass Filter is, that's totally fine. You know, just don't worry about it. Um, yeah, 32K has been added back into the code. Um, so now you have an option to use 32K, 16K, or 8K. Um, as long as your gyro can support 32K, you can turn on 32K. Um, on the F7 FC I was using, I could never get 32K to give me stable PID loop times. Um, I'm sure that H7 will be able to easily handle it. Uh, maybe with some of the recent changes I made that helped with CPU load, will be able to do it. But, you know, I disabled as much as I could, but didn't really work. So, 16K, if you still want to kind of use 32K, I'd just stick with 16K. And you can set your PID loop based off of that. Um, anything else? Yeah, I removed quick rates as well. So nobody uses quick rates, and I want to get rid of some of the you know, the bulk that's get that's, you know, kind of come into the code because there's just so much going on. So I've removed quick rates. I added support for Pegasus. So the Pegasus UI or user interface um, currently doesn't work. We're still updating it, getting it better, but I've added the code in emu flight to support Pegasus. So now Pegasus will the, the code that needs to be added to support Pegasus, that has been added. Um, and then I've yeah, updated the dynamic low pass filter. Um, so it's the dynamic low pass filter 2, or yeah, I've updated that. And yeah, it works really quite well. So if you want to see the code that's still kind of missing, um, right now we still need to add Helio support. We need to finalize renaming everything. Um, PID.C, we, we still aren't completely fans of how um, the YAW code works in Betaflight. We think it just works better in EmuFlight. Um, so we need to pull over some of the EmuFlight YAW code, as well as update iTerm Relax so we can separate it for YAW and remove all the options for iTerm Relax because you don't need five different options for iTerm Relax. So that's something that's still in the works. Um, coming up with a way to do presets, as well as the VTX table stuff. Um, we plan on removing the adjustments. So adjustments allowed you to change your PIDs in flight, as well as some other things. And it didn't really make sense to change these things in flight. Um, so we're going to be removing a lot of that, except for the ability to change your PID profile in flight because it actually makes sense to change your PID profile in flight. So I'll leave that ability, but I plan to remove a lot of the rest of it, which will save CPU power. Not CPU power, it'll save CPU memory, which is getting really tight. Um, and then I'm not sure we're going to add smart detail smoothing or witchcraft to this new code. However, um, I still need to implement SPA or stick position attenuation which is you know really it's like TPA but as you move your sticks um, you can do some really cool stuff with yaw where you make your eye term shrink a lot on yaw as you move your stick um, yeah that's that's a thing um, seems to be yeah it needs to be added but a lot of the emu flight specific code has been merged over at this point. Um, it's now just refining the beta flight code, merging over some of the new stuff that we're still working on, and you know, getting things um, more finalized. 
Um, and yeah, as you can see here, I've put in quite a bit of work, added over 200,000 lines of code, removed 17,000, so still more work that needs to get done, but it's, it's getting there. And um, yeah, with this code that I've added, there's not a whole lot more emu-specific stuff that needs to be added. It'll become more just refining what's in the beta flight code and refining the beta flight code to be more like we like it. Like right now we're looking at potentially removing deminimization because um, we have deboost, which we feel is a better way of handling that same problem. Um, so yeah, I hope you liked that little update. Um, have a good one, everyone.